Hi there, me again, your friendly neighborhood humble stroke assaulter. So I've alluded to the fact a couple times I'm going to do a video about goal setting and stroke rehabilitation and recovery. This is it. <clears throat> so we're going to discuss over the next 15 to 20 minutes-ish. Uh, sadly, you'll notice all my videos are pretty much <clears throat> unscripted. I'm still trying to figure out editing. Uh, and I, I find the research and then I kind of create a framework of what I want to do. So let's talk about goal setting and stroke. So regardless of the type of stroke you've had, regardless of how disruptive to your life your stroke was, you're going to need to set some goals to be able to get back to where you want to be. And I appreciate right off the hop, uh, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a medical practitioner, I've only played a doctor on TV, so again, anything that I'm going to say today is going to be, again, a little bit of generalities, and any anything you want to do, either as the individual that's had the stroke themselves, or the supporters of those that have had a stroke, any goal setting that is done needs to take place with your clinical team, like neurologist, general practitioner, um, vision care specialists, occupational therapist, uh, speech and language path, physiotherapist, psychological counseling team, whatever, right? So you need to make sure that the goals you're setting, um, they've got some clinical help behind it. I'll get into that why in a minute. So first off, we have to recognize the fact that there are basically three entities, three, that's three, yeah, three entities that are gonna want goals. One will be the stroke assaulter themselves. The individual that's had a stroke will have goals, right? Two, the family members and friends of the person that's had the stroke are going to have goals, right? So you, as the person that had the stroke, will have goals. Your friends and family will kind of have goals. And then your clinical team will also have goals, right? Now, I appreciate that there's going to be a bit of duality in what I'm going to say later on. So I'm just going to preface the duality that's going to occur later. Now, everything you do during your stroke recovery, rehabilitation, and then reintegration to your world as it was before your stroke, all depends on the individual that's had the stroke themselves under a couple of conditions. One, what does your clinical team say about how bad your stroke was what your limitations are expected to be. And again, I say expected, right? Um, and sort of the benchmarks that they would expect you to see and approximately when they would expect you to see the see you hit those, right? So sad thing is no two people. So let's take me, for example, you could clone me 20 times over, right? And you could give me the exact same stroke 20 times over. So like I've never had a stroke before and out of those 20 individuals, one will die that day. Problem solved. Like you're dead. One will simply wake up with a bad headache and go, ow, that hurt. And then the remainder will be clusters of um, levels of dysfunctions or not. So because strokes are messy and we don't know what we don't know, your clinical team, they're going to speak in, well, we would expect this to be able to happen by this day, right? Does that mean that's a hard and fast time? No. Does that mean you'll account, uh, find that benchmark well before they expect you to? Possibly. Does that mean you might find that benchmark well after they expect you to? Possibly, right? So preface anything you expect to do with input from your clinical team. You may need to initially, while you're beginning executing your goals, modify how you do things. For example, I've gone back to the gym and I was told by my neurologist, I'm not allowed to lift anything over my head uh, uh, over 80 pounds for the next six months. Right? Um, and no grunting, meaning uh, don't involve in any weightlifting or uh, any physical ex exercise that would cause me to you know, have to strain too much as to raise the, the blood pressure in the thinker, right? Cause I could stroke out again. So let's just talk about what goal setting looks like post-stroke. So one, 
we're going to use the SMART an acronym, S-M-A-R-T. Yeah, S-M-A-R-T. Yeah. So one, the goal has to be simply worded and very specific, right? Very simply worded and very specific. Uh, so by by having a very specific goal and it, it being very specifically worded, it makes it easier to focus on, right? Um, I am going to... Uh, goal of mine was uh, to learn to tie my shoes again. Right? I'm going to learn to tie my shoes again. So S is both simple and specific. Uh, M is manageable. Is it a manageable goal? Right? Is there? Is it something you're able to do? I would also say M should also include maintenance of goal. Is there a way that you can maintain? You know and judge how well you're doing as you do that, right? Uh, so you want to be able to make sure that the goal that you're about to set, there's some way to manage how that occurs and, and, and maintain progress. A, achievable, right? Is it something you're able to achieve right now, right? Or in, in a short period of time? Uh, and I'll get into that when we get to R, right? So... Because the last thing you want to do is set a goal that is going to set you up for failure. Right? Now, R, is the goal realistic? And is the goal relevant? So, are you able to right now realistically begin to start that goal? Like Not finish it, start it. Are you able realistically on that day to start that goal? If it's not, if, you, if it's not realistic that you're able to start working on that goal today, right? And again, the finishing of the goal at this point is irrelevant. Because if you can't safely begin to work on the goal, right, it's not achievable. And if you can't achieve the goal, it's not manageable, right? You may be able to simply word the goal. You may be able to specifically word the goal. But if it's not realistic that you begin working on that goal today, because you still have mobility issues, you still have language issues, you still have balance issues, um, that goal requires too many steps to get there right now. The last one is relevant. Is it relevant you start that goal today? Right? Case in point, um, many months ago, about two months after my stroke, I know there was a job at my work that I really, 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 really wanted. Really wanted that job. In fact, in some cases, I think it'd be the job I'd best suited for. I was bound and determined to go back to work. Uh, well within the initial three months, they said they were going to write me off for. And I think just after they decided to write me off for six months. And I think, if memory serves... I hadn't turned in the six-month note yet to work. And I wanted to go back to work. Was that a realistic goal? Yeah, it was realistic in a global sense that I want to go back to work. Was it realistic that I work on that goal that day? Not, e not even remotely. No. <laughs> Had I not listened to several very close friends that gave me really good advice and a little bit of shit... Um, and thank you, the group of you who did that. Had I gone back to work at that time, because there was a job I really wanted, and I believe that would have been one of the jobs I would have been best suited for. Had I gone back to work at that time, I I don't even know what that would have looked like. I know I would have landed on Had I been successful in the competition and had I gotten that job, I know, I know for fact, I would have made a fool of myself and asked on myself, landed on my face and gone right back on a leave of absence and lost any kind of credibility. Um, but I was bound and determined. I was like, fuck it, I'm going to do it. Had I done that, there's a possibility I could have stroked out again. Or drastically, drastically um, compromised all the gains I'd made to that point and up until today, in fact, um, I would have taken a huge three paces step back march. Huge three paces step back. So, 
Is it realistic and is it relevant? Well, was it relevant that I want to go back to work? Yes, it was quite relevant. Was it realistic that I wanted to go back to work? Yeah, very realistic. I want to go back to work. However, was it realistic that I start working on that goal that very day? Like, I'm going back to work tomorrow. No, wasn't realistic. Was it relevant at that point during my rehabilitation journey? Nope, not even remotely. No. All the experts had said, you're off for six months. Friends kind of agreed with that and drastically disagreed with my decisions or my attempt to make a decision. Because um, I'm a man, so decision making can be difficult. Who had a stroke, who, you know, now can't really make decisions all that well sometimes, especially at that point. I was more caught up in the emotion the emotion of it. Like, I need to get back. I need to prove that I can do this. I need to make sure that everyone understands that I'm not, you know, damaged, right? So to speak. Now, and again, today, being the 21st of December, right? Today, I have a return to work date in 10 days. Uh, is it realistic? that I start going back to work? Yes, it is. Now it is a realistic goal. Is it relevant in my recovery journey right now today that I get back to work? Yes, as of today, it's relevant. Now, we now get to T. Traditionally, T means time. How long will that take? Problem, you had a stroke. Time is irrelevant, right? You can set goals in regards to I expect it to take six weeks, six months, whatever, or I expect that to take, say, 10 sessions of certain types of therapies. However, that may not be realistic. Um, what's more important with a stroke is the target, right? You, you can set, you know, realistic time limits, um, What's more important is the target. So, for example, I've been going to the gym uh, to try to get endurance back and get back in shape after my stroke. It is my goal to be able to run five kilometers in 24 minutes again. Okay? That's my goal. So, specifically worded and simply worded, is my goal to run five kilometers in 24 minutes again. Okay. Is it manageable? Yeah, it's manageable. Is there a way to gain, main, maintain a, uh, a sense of accomplishment? Yeah, because I'm going to go run 5K at some point and the time's going to suck. And then I'm just going to keep running 5K until I either get to a point where I cannot get any faster or I get to 24 minutes. Right? Is that achievable? Yeah, at one point in my life I could easily crack off 5K in 22-ish minutes. 23-ish minutes. Um, I think 24 is a reasonable goal. I'll even accept 26 minutes. Um, is it realistic? Yep, I think it is. I think it's a very realistic goal. Is it relevant to where I'm at now? Very relevant, right? Uh, I want to be able to, by April, June of 2019, be able to get on the field with my mates when we're out shooting and be an effective member of the team and not have any difficulties right now so we know it's simply worded we know it's specifically worded we know it's manageable there's a way to maintain goal right so you have a way to track your progress which means possibly setting step goals right uh, you then have is it achievable yep very achievable I, I can achieve this now I have the ability to do it um, you know three months ago I was still in physiotherapy. So three months ago, me even thinking about running, just running in and of itself would have been a disaster, right? Uh, two months ago, I was still suffering from post-stroke fatigue a lot. Even two months ago, this wouldn't have been achievable. Let's talk about the last one. T, time and target. How long is it going to take me to run... 5K in 24 to 26 minutes? I have no idea. <laughs> I don't have a clue. And because I have to accept the fact I have certain limitations because of the stroke, 
um, that may not be easily overcome. Right? I still have a proprioception issue at times. I still have balance issues at times. Um, I still have a little bit of a gait, gait pace and cadence issue uh, at times. Uh, however, with more time on the treadmill, that will slowly go away. So at some point, I'm going to be able to have the physical endurance because of my work on the treadmill and on the stationary bike to have the physical endurance to be able to run 5K. And then I'm going to have, you know, build up my running ability to be able to run, you know, 5K in a reasonable time. And then once I get to the reasonable time, then I'm going to have to start paring it down to get into the 24 to 26 minute range. My goal is 24. <clears throat> I accept the fact that due to factors outside my control, I may have to accept 26. I accept that. Right? Uh, so my goal, I can't judge it by time. It's just not realistic. Post-stroke, it is not realistic to expect certain goals in certain times. Now, if it's a matter of weight loss, right, um, depending on your level of mobility, depending how you eat, yeah, you might be able to set like a weight loss goal by time, right? And again, anything you do in regards to physical activity, weight loss, please talk to your medical teams, get their, get their sign off, right? Um, that being said, I now have to focus on the target. So my target, five kilometers, 24 to 26 minutes. That's that's the goal I'm willing to accept. 5K, 24 to 26 minutes. Uh, exactly how will that present itself? I don't know. I, I, I legitimately don't know. So that's just some, and again, I'll include, I've done a little bit of research and I'll include some of the links that I've used. So if you're, Going through the rehab, reevaluation, reintegration portion, post stroke recovery. For those of you that have had the stroke, I appreciate you're going to set goals. I, I totally understand you're going to set goals. And I totally understand at times you were going to try to set a goal that at this point is not realistic and not relevant. I, I, I have been there, right? What I'm going to suggest is if you're going to try to set a goal and you immediately recognize at this point it's not realistic and at this point it's not relevant, take two steps back. There is another goal there. You just have to figure out what it was or what it is, what it should be, what it could be. Right? Um, there, are, there are many little step goals you're going to have to seek out and, and, and conquer as you continue going through your post-stroke journey. So one of the things I've been doing to get ready to go back to work is I will go down to the nearest large city to me. I will hang out in the mall, right? Just walk around um, because ambient noise is a huge issue. Fluorescent lights is a huge issue. So I put on my contacts, I put on my sunglasses, I go hang out in the mall and I just get used to being around hordes of people with lots of ambient noise it's a thing right um and and that has helped me immensely immensely uh are there other activities you might want to engage yourself in similar to what i've done that's possible but again anything you do for a post-stroke recovery goal right it's got to be simply worded specifically worded manageable right you have a way to maintain your goal, it's got to be achievable, it's got to be realistic, it's got to be relevant. Don't worry about the time so much. Right? Time in some cases is absolutely irrelevant. What is more relevant is target. What is your target? And I'll be honest, one thing you need to accept uh, going into setting any goal post-stroke is either a plateauing meaning you're going to get to a certain point and things just kind of level out for a while because unfortunately plateauing is a thing you're also going to have to accept some of the work you're going to enter into is going to be a complete struggle it's just 
it just is. Like you are going to enter in to start doing something and it's going to feel frustrating. It's going to feel like you're not making any headway. It's going to feel like, well, why the fuck am I even trying this? Remember this, your brain tried to kill you. Your brain and your body have to learn to like each other again. And that's just a thing. Eventually, you will get through that. Again, I can't give you a time. I can't tell you it's going to take two weeks or three weeks. But ultimately, if you set a goal and you are determined and you legitimately have the ability to get to your goal, you will get there. I just can't tell you how long it'll take. I can't tell you, you know, what you're going to need to do to get there. All I can tell you is, provided everything works out in your favor, you can set almost any goal after your stroke. Realizing and, 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 and tempering that with what your limitations are from your clinical team. And on that note, if you happen to like what you've been watching in the last six months, because please like, share, subscribe. Uh, if you happen to know someone going through their post-stroke journey or know someone that's assisting someone going through their post-stroke journey, please point the channel out to them. They might get some benefit out of some of the content I've covered. And if you haven't enjoyed what you've been watching for the past 21 minutes and 26 seconds, please find a new hobby. And if you happen to see either in yourself or someone around you the signs or symptoms of a stroke, that being excuse me, uh, someone who appears to be befuddled or confused, someone who has uh, immediate... Uh, eye vision issues, uh, someone who has facial droop, has inability to raise both arms equally effectively or at all, uh, inability to smile, speech uh, issues, slurred, stuttering speech, inappropriate word usage for situation or context, uh, it, inability to maintain their own body weight, general body weakness, weakness on one side, please immediately place that person in a position of comfort and dial 911. Something so simple can save a life.